me turn on my active captain here and we'll show you what side imaging looks like. Now I've switched my side imaging to uh, my GPS map 1042 unit here um, instead of my 93 SV. I will show you some screenshots on the 93 SV, don't worry. It's just, it's a lot easier to actually show you real time recording of the side imaging with the GPS map units and record. All right, I'll, right now we're on Watts Bar Lake. Probably mentioned that already. I will show you kind of the area that I'm, I'm scanning here. Typically this time of year, it's, it's the first week of April. It's the first week of April. And uh, these crappie are in their late pre-spawn phase. There's gonna be some fish up shallow. For the tournament, you gotta target the late pre-spawners. They're the ones that are gonna have the big, big bellies on them, full of eggs, the biggest weight. And uh, as you can see here, I've already marked a few waypoints but uh, I'm just kind of going through this back channel uh, on the river here and I'm focusing on areas right on the creek edge. It seems like if you can find, and this is both uh, kind of an early spring or early to late fall pattern it seems like when I go down to southern states on reservoir systems, if you can find creek channels that actually intersect um, or if you can find timber on the edge of creek channels, it's a really good spot, deeper water, 15, 25, 35 feet, it's a really good spot to find some big crappie. So as you can see here, I actually have uh, four, four or five waypoints here. So I'm gonna, th I'm gonna come back to that, but I'm gonna continue to scan up the uh, left side of this little back channel. And I marked a few other uh, trees or brush piles in this back channel. So. Once I get done marking them with side imaging, and I'm gonna talk about my side imaging settings in just a second. Once I get done marking them, I'm going to throw down the live scope and actually try to find one of these bigger two pounders here. But let's go back to side imaging. The settings on this are going to be pretty darn close to the same on my Echo Map 93SV. Uh, if you go to menu, my contrast, I run it a little hot. Uh, 60, 60 to 65% typically if it's super dirty water, uh, I, I fish the Mississippi River um, and when it rains, that water gets really dirty. There's a lot of sediment in the water. You might tone it down to like 45 to 50%. But typically on a lake where there hasn't been a huge rainfall, where there isn't a ton of current, ton of sediment, I run it a little hot, 60, 60 to 65. Um, your brightness, which is also Garmin does it differently. So typically on your Hummingbird, you're going to see contrast and sensitivity as your settings. For Garmin, they do contrast and brightness. Brightness is going to be your sensitivity. If, if I crank this all the way up, you can see the screen just gets crazy bright. Uh, typically 50 to 60 percent seems to be good, maybe a little hotter than that. If you go down too much, I mean you lose basically all, I mean you can't see anything. So. Um, I typically run it, let's see here, we're gonna go probably about 62, 63. You can run them a little hot um, because you really, for what we're doing today, you really want the trees to just pop out. Uh, you want any type of fish on those trees to really pop out. Now with the GPS map unit, I can only run my 455, unlike my 93SV where I can run my Mega, but I gotta be honest with you, the pixels on the GPS map unit because it's a 10 inch screen, um, I got more pixels, so I actually am getting a pretty darn good I image despite only having 455 kilohertz. Cool thing about this, it's just a toggle button. You can just auto adjust your range. I'm gonna run it at 70 when I'm looking for uh, any pieces of cover, any brush piles, trees, um, even rock piles or something. I'm gonna put it at 70. When I'm actually trying to go over those fish, I'm gonna crunch it down to about 40, maybe 50 left and right. Um, if I know exactly I'm gonna go right over the top of it, I'm probably gonna to switch to down imaging to give me the best separation to find out if there's actually fish in that brush pile uh, or that tree that I'm trying to fish. But for just finding cover with what we're doing now, we're gonna leave it at 70. Uh, you're gonna to go to your setup scroll speed. I had a couple questions about this and I did a video a long time ago uh, with my hummingbirds on scroll speed. I was idling by a bridge and I, I set my scroll speed to one and then I cranked it all the way up to 10. And it's just, the scroll speed is the speed at which your screen populates the data. Um, 
on most websites, Humminbird, I think for sure has this on their website, Garmin might as well. They typically tell you to run, to, to set this two notches or two numbers above, one to two numbers above your speed. So if your idle speed is three, uh, which typically on this boat, it's, it's like two and a half to three miles an hour. My scroll speed should be about four to five. That, uh, according to manufacturers, that's kind of what the setting is. You can play around with it. Uh, find the best that works for you. If you crank it up, let's, let's just crank this up to 10. See how that screen's really populating through there now? Now, it's all blurred because I'm not moving, and I'll explain that in a second. But I, I'm going to set it back to where it was. It seems like that was a good setting. My noise reject... Typically I run interference on low. If you're on a super dirty system or you got a lot of current ripping through there, there's a lot of silt moving, you might turn it up to medium. I wouldn't turn it up to high, uh, specifically because you're gonna lose too much data. You're, it's gonna kinda wash out to rock piles, brush. It's just, it's not gonna show you what you need to see. Um, TVG I got set at medium, I don't know why that is. I'm gonna turn that down to low. Uh, typically, oh, I do know why. I'm getting a little pinged off my lower unit here and it's causing some interference. That's why I, I set it to, uh, to medium. Typically I only have to run it on low, but uh, for some reason, for some reason it's pinging off the lower unit there. Uh, if you noticed, I, you can kind of see it. You can see the lower unit. Uh, there's the big yellow line in the middle, which the GPS map units all have that. And then there's some a couple other yellow lines you can kind of see on that little segment. And that was the, the sonar pinging off the, the lower unit. So I'm gonna run it on, on medium. Yeah, appearance typically I either run amber or copper uh, are the two most common. Amber is very similar to the Humminbird unit. So if you are a Humminbird guy and you're switching to Garmin, run the amber. It's just gonna look so familiar to you. Oh, here we go, range lines. So let's, uh, let's talk quick about this. Because I mentioned in a second, in a separate video a while back, and I, I just said it off the cuff and I was incorrect when I said it. So if you notice on the range lines here, that 15 foot mark, so it goes 0, 10, 20. Anything in the black, so from zero to 15, both to the right and the left, that is below the boat. Everything from the, the actual gold image start, that is now starting to the right and the left of the boat on the bottom. So even though I'm just viewing 60 feet left and right here, I'm really only viewing 45, roughly 45 feet left and right of the actual lake bottom because this black image is directly below the boat. Just wanted to clear that, clarify that because I know I messed it up in a, another video here. So if we go back, I'm gonna turn that off. Um, you can change your view selection to left and right um, so if I were to be scanning docks, let's say, I'd want to put it on the least interference side, which would be if you got your transducer mounted on your starboard side, your right side, you'd want to scan docks on that starboard side um, because then that signal is not getting interfered with by the lower unit. That's why I would use something like this. Um, if I'm just scanning like I am today, deep water, 15, 20, 30 feet, I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to scan both left and right. Um, because I'm looking for trees. There's a school of some bait fish. So if you notice, those fish actually look pretty big, but we're not moving very fast. That's just probably a small school of shad or whatever a bait fish are in here. Um, I'm gonna turn the motor back on and I'm gonna show you something that some of you might be a little confused with and I do get some questions from time to time. So if you notice as we start moving again, we're starting to get a really clear image. And if you go in a straight line, that's gonna give you the best image. Now, if I all of a sudden turn sharp, see on the left side of the screen, you can see it more so on the left side of the screen, the lines start to curve, okay? And that's because I'm disrupting the image. The signals that's getting sent out, that beam, it's getting sent out to the left side of the image. You're actually pinging off different directions of this underwater point that's coming off from the shoreline here. And that's why you can see a little bit of those curves. I'm gonna find a tree and it's, it's gonna be much more pronounced when I do find a tree for you. So let's just scan around, see if we can find some deeper timber along this creek bed. What's really nice about coming to Tennessee, flip-flops, Tennessee in April, yeah. I'm not gonna be wearing flip-flops till like mid to late May back in Wisconsin. Okay, here though, okay. So here's how this side imaging thing works. Actually, let's, I'm gonna make a turn on it, see if we can blur that image. 
I don't think that, I think that's some, that's gotta be some sort of brush. All right, this is a perfect example of when you make a turn, it blurs the image. So I think this is either rocks or some sort of brush. I'm gonna throw a waypoint on it. But if you noticed, it looked like it was coming in as a clear image and then I made that turn and see how those lines really got bent and blurred. That's what happens when you start making turns left and right. So if you, this is your first time using side imaging and you wanna get the clearest picture, try to keep it as straight as possible. You're gonna to have to obviously make turns to avoid things, but try to keep the image, try to keep the boat as straight as possible. That's gonna give you the clearest image. Let's talk real quick about shadows. And for those of you that don't quite understand uh, how side imaging works, if there's some stumps here, I'm gonna pull, oh, we're drifting over some trees or something. Typically, if this is your transducer, okay, and there's a ton of trees right now coming up on the screen on the left side of my transducer. That transducer is sending a beam. We'll call it, for simplistic purposes, we'll call it a beam of light, okay? And when that beam of light hits an object, that light can't go through the object, and it creates a dead zone, or in, in this case, the shadow, okay? So the shadow is the area that the sonar, or the, the frequency, isn't actually reaching. So the higher or the longer the shadow, the typically the higher in the water column the object is or the taller the object is in case of it's a tree or a brush pile or something like that. This could all be sunken timber. See, I, I made a left turn there and see how all those images kind of bent and, and blurred. That's a perfect example of that again. You can see right here, these, these small little bright spots, those are right there in the crosshairs, just to the left of the crosshairs now. There's definitely fish down there, but they could be bass um, on those logs or catfish or whatever species is out there. I just, I'm not very confident that those are crappie. And that is a big school of shad, but there is, there is something down there. So we're going to throw a waypoint on that. There's a tree or something with a ton of bait fish on it. And if you can find that, there's hopefully gonna be a crop or two on it. Another thing I should mention, if you notice on the left side of my screen, it's a very bright image, and on the right side, it's kind of that duller, blacker gold. Right, that's the edge of the creek channel. The left side is that harder bottom. It looks like some small gravel, maybe. Um, based on the shoreline, I'm just looking at it, it's some small gravel. And on the right side, you get into that sand, or that silt, mud, and muck. That's that soft bottom. Um, typically that's what I'm looking for in the late fall up north on our natural lakes because crop will stack up right on this transition edge. But that's what you're looking at when you see that on side imaging. The brighter return, that's a harder bottom return. I was fishing the Mississippi River uh, last week and that sand really pops. It's a really bright image. And there's actually, because of the current, you get those sand dunes or those kind of ripples. And walleye specifically, there's all kind of bait fish or all kind of species in the Mississippi. but Walleye specifically will actually sit in the trough between those sand dunes. And I got a few images here that you can take a look at, um, but they're real easy to pick out. So if you're fishing a, an actual river system where it's just straight river, there's, no, there's not a whole lot of back channels or anything, and you're fishing sand, this is what you're gonna look for. Those fish will sit down um, just in, it's a little bit of a current break and they'll sit down in the troughs of those, those little sand dunes. You can actually see little, the ledge kind of ripple down on the right side of the screen there. And on the far right, that looks like a log, but what that is, it's a shelf. Uh, the lake bottom actually, it's a steep drop off. And when this transducer's hitting this, it's not seeing this next level of drop off. So it shows up as a big, long shadow like that. That's actually a big ledge. That'd be a good eater. Yep, but uh, that is how I'm just going about using side imaging. Those are my settings. We're gonna continue this kind of process throughout this lake, hopefully find some two pounders and uh, hopefully win some money on the tournament, pay for gas. So appreciate you watching as always. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. We'll see you in the next one.